Just going through your results, you're talking about reduced activity coming through uh, uh, for the company over this financial period. It seems that that has pretty much been the sentiment uh, for many corporates out there. Take us back to the period that was and, and some of the experiences and challenges that you had. Yeah, I think you, as you correctly say, I think a lot of South African corporates are are seeing that their, their, their bottom lines are growing faster than their top lines. Um, for us, uh, looking back over the last year, we had um, some interesting growth opportunities come through in the IT space. So we saw, certainly saw that market uh, doing better and our subsidiary bites benefiting mm -hmm. from that. Um, LTEC, uh, for the most part, the markets were also relatively buoyant um, and, and, and that, that was uh, translated into their numbers. Um, where I think we really saw weakness in the market was really through our Powertech subsidiary and uh, about 50% of Powertech's revenues come from the the building and construction industry and um, th that industry is still uh, quite challenged right now and uh, the outlook is still you know pretty pretty pessimistic uh, looking forward for the uh, for the building and construction industry mm -hmm. you have of course cited uh, the fact that Eskom is still very much uh, ongoing with its building operations we know construction industry very much in the doldrums uh, but you do talk about uh, Africa offering a great growth potential with regards to telecom cables uh, going forward yeah. as well and we know you're delving into this space yeah uh, as as the undersea cables uh, hook into the, the various areas of the continent, um, obviously they, that, that bandwidth has to be transported uh, terrestrially and that's where we have uh, products which are uh, fiber optic cable and products which can benefit from, uh, from that. Mm. Uh, looking at the Altec uh, division and of course we know that Altec also came under pressure with some of its divisions, particularly focusing on what we see coming through in East Africa. Uh, we know that the competitive environment is very rife mm. in that space. Do you think you can overcome those challenges because there could be a lot of opportunities on the go? Yeah, we're still r firmly committed that as part of our strategy, the, uh, the East African market is something that we have got a great opportunity in. Um, we're continuing to invest in that area. We had two great years after the acquisition, and then last year was a, was a disappointment. Um, but I'm pretty co confident that we've got our hands around some of the issues and uh, we'll return that business to, uh, to good profitability mm. levels. Uh, we know that Altec is also on the acquisition front, uh, also sitting with a, a nice amount of cash as well. Uh, what are the plans going forward for Altec? Yeah, I think for the group, uh, effectively acquisitions are now back on the, on the radar screen. I think mm. through the recessionary period, Altec, uh, was acquisitive, um, but Powertech and Bytes, we really focused on internal measures, cost control, working capital management, um, and, and that's given us the growth that we've seen this year, where you, our turnover is up 2%, yeah. but earnings up 15%. But for both those businesses, their cash flow generation was very good in the past year, Bytes and Powertech, as well as Altec. And um, for, for both Bytes and Powertech, mm -hmm. acquisitions are back on the, on the radar screen. Well, looking at your overall cash position, you're sitting at a, on around 21 billion rand or so. Uh, we know over the period, you only accumulated around 84 million mm -hmm. rand. Uh, some would say that's relatively subdued. What contributes to the fact that you were generally uncash generative relative to the overall cash position? No, we uh, our, our total cash position sits at about 1.3 billion rand right now, um, and we generated um, before capex and and the like. We generated about two billion rand, so we were we actually net net generated close to 450 million rand uh, for the year, which uh, and that includes capital inve investment of some 600 million. So um, I, th I think we were quite happy with that. Our working capital was also good uh, came our days came down and um, so so overall we were not unhappy with our cash uh, performance so what are you going to be doing with all this cash that's what most investors finding are the right <laughs> finding the right investments but but doing that you know on a cautious basis you don't go and spend cash just because you've got the cash in today's environment it's uh, a great comfort that we've got a very strong balance sheet and gives us the flexibility that if there's an opportunity we can move quite quickly and uh, and take advantage of that well, you're, of course you're also not sitting on a lot of debt as well which puts yeah. you in a fantastic position for that acquisition are you going to be delving in the same uh, sphere in the same sector that sort of IT telecom space going forward or are you looking for something completely different no we'll stick with what we've uh, what our three core pillars are so the acquisitions we would look at would really fit within either the LTIC fold the bytes fold or the powertic fold we wouldn't be looking to branch further out than that and have you got any anything on the radar screen at this point? Any specific power companies tech, you're power, looking at? Power tech, not really. There's a few opportunities, but they're very uh, preliminary. Um, Bytes, we have a couple of opportunities that are a lot warmer, um, both here and also in the mm -hmm. UK. 
um, and and uh, probably bytes um, is is more likely than PowerTech to to move uh, on the acquisition front. Mm -hmm. And then of course we'll keep the focus at LTEC. That that won't change. Of course. Well, I mean, looking at Byte Systems, um, and that's really what puts you in good stead. We know that mm. uh, this company did quite well over the last period. Uh, Byte's healthcare solutions uh, performing ahead of expectations. Double digit increases in revenue. Can you sustain these levels? What contributes it to, you, to these double digit increases? Yeah, those those businesses gained market share. We picked up uh, some new customers um, uh, in in the Byte healthcare space. Um, Discovery is a is a key customer of ours right now, and uh, they previously weren't in the fold. So uh, it's a it's a combination of picking up market share and then also just efficiencies, cost, cost control and, and making sure that uh, we're as efficient as we can be. Going forward, within the next five years, where do you see Altron? I see Altron um, much more African centric. Um, right now we get about 10% of our revenues from, from Africa. Um, we, we've got a target that between three and five years from now we'd like to have 20% of our revenues coming uh, from, from, from Africa. So we'd certainly be a more of an African player than what we are right now. Um, but we, we've got very, very solid businesses that have weathered the, the, the economy really well. And as markets pick up, going forward now and, and demand starts coming back in some key sectors off the low cost base that we're on right now, I think that presents a lot of good opportunities for earnings growth.